tutorial, we will learn how to set up a complete project in JNIT. We will input the baby cable vest, which is also the example that comes preloaded with the app. You can download a copy of the written pattern on the JNIT website in the tutorial number 3. I will show how the input works on the iPhone version of JNIT. However, you may want to consider inputting your project on the web portal first, and then downloading it to your device where you can still make modifications. The input on the web portal is much faster, but it is functionally very much the same. In time we will add other tutorials that show how to input the same project on the web portal and on the iPad. Let's take a quick look at the pattern first. You can enter items such as yarn, other materials, needles and so on in the project info section of the app. You can enter as much information as you like, but I think it's always a good idea to add the abbreviations to the notes of the project, just in case you need to reference them while you're knitting. You can find the knitting directions on the second page of the pattern. We will divide the project into two pieces, back and front, and we will enter them separately. Just like in the directions, we will start with the back piece. First, let's go to the My Projects page and create a new project. Let's call it Baby Cables. We save this project and since we are starting to input the back piece, let's create a new piece as well. This takes us directly to the piece setup screen where we can change the name of the piece to something more descriptive like back. There are other piece settings that we can modify on the screen. The current row number refers to the row counter value of this piece. Since we haven't started knitting yet, zero is fine, but you can always come back to the screen to adjust this number if, for example, you had to frog a piece and want to start all over again. The next item is the number of stitches at start. If you fill in this number, then JNIT's stitch counter will automatically keep track of the number of stitches in each row. According to the pattern, we have to cast on 48 stitches and we can fill in this number here. The list of events is where we input all pattern directions. We refer to individual pattern instructions or steps as events in JNIT. So as you go through the pattern, you can break it down and enter it here as a series of events. Or when it makes sense, you can also input a group of instructions, like a chart or a specific stitch pattern, as a block and insert it into the piece here. Now let's go back to the pattern and see what the first instructions are. The piece starts with cast on 48 stitches. Let's create an event for these instructions by tapping on add new event which will take you to the event setup screen. Here we can configure event settings starting with the type which can be either alert, increase or decrease. The default alert works fine for our cast on event. Next is the start. An event can either be linked to another event or start at a specific row or height. For cast on events, I usually like to choose row zero, so the default works just fine. The note is what you will be seeing in the counter screen when this event appears, so choose something that will be easy to follow when you're knitting. For this cast on event, we could just say cast on 48 stitches. Lastly, we have to set the occurrence of this event. Since the cast on happens just once, we don't actually have to change the default settings. Similarly, the follow-up stages only apply to events that have repeats and we don't have to worry about that right now. 
We are actually done with the setup of our first event and can go back to the previous screen. The next pattern instructions are to work six rows in two by two ribs. To input the ribbing instructions, we again add a new event. As before, the type is an alert, but this event should start in row one. As a note, I'm going to input two by two ribs. Now here's what's different. Since we have to work six rows of the ribbing, we want this event to appear six times, not just once. To change this, tap on this row, which will take you to the event occurrence screen in which we can change the settings. Since we want to see this event in every one of the first six rows, every which row should be one and how many times six. Going back to the previous screen, you can see that the occurrence settings have changed and we are done with the setup of this event. Next we have the following directions in the pattern. In the sixth row, evenly pick up 8 stitches which makes 56 stitches on the needle. These instructions are interesting because we actually have to increase by a number of stitches. So our new event will be of type increase. As a start we select row 6 according to the instructions and the note can be something like evenly pick up 8 stitches. For increase and decrease events it's actually not so important to specify the number of stitches in the note because we will input them in the occurrence settings. You can see that these settings now also include the increase settings, namely the number of stitches and the side, and we can modify all of these by clicking on this row. The default occurrence settings are actually fine for this event since it happens only once. But we have to change the number of stitches to 8 and we have to choose an appropriate side. You can scroll through a list of all available options and for this event we choose evenly. You may notice the indicators of times 1 and times 2 in this list. These are important for the stitch count. In this case it means that the number of stitches 8 will be multiplied by 1 before being added to the stitch count and that is exactly what we want. Now that we're done with this event we can go back. The next instructions are to repeat a cable pattern and we will learn how to input this as a block in a separate tutorial. So let's skip ahead to the following directions. When you reach 6 inches in total height, start the armhole by decreasing by 3 stitches on both sides. The corresponding event is interesting in many ways. First, it's a decrease event. Then it starts at a specific height, not in a row, and according to the instructions we choose the height as 6 inches. As a note we can simply say armhole. And lastly, since we have to decrease by 3 stitches on both sides, we select as the number of stitches 3 and then we have to choose an appropriate side. We could take both sides or armhole. Notice that both options have a multiplier of 2 which means that the stitch count will be reduced by 6 stitches in this row. Taking a look back at the pattern we see that the directions we have to input next are then, in every second row, decrease twice by two stitches and three times by one stitch. These decrease instructions really still belong to the armhole event and we can set them up as follow-up stages to this event. Follow-up stages can be used for events that repeat, but for which the occurrence or increase or decrease settings differ from the first stage that has been set up. 
The directions tell us to decrease twice by two stitches in every second row, so we add a stage and change the occurrence settings to every which row two, how many times twice, number of stitches two, and as a side we choose armhole just like for the first stage. And finally, for the last stage, we decrease in every second row again, three times by one stitch for the armhole. You can see that all stages are set up according to the instructions and you may delete any added stage but there has to be one stage left for every event. Let's see what we have to do next. In 9.5 inches in total height, shape the neck by binding off the middle 8 stitches and finish both shoulders separately. In the following second row, decrease by 2 stitches on each side of the neck opening. This makes 12 stitches remain for each shoulder. These instructions are very similar to the armhole event that we just set up. So I went ahead and input them as the following event. It's a decrease event starting at 9.5 inches. And as a note, I just copied the instructions. We first decreased by 8 stitches in the middle, just once, and then one time in the second row by 2 stitches at the neckline. And we already got to the last part of the back piece, which is when the piece measures 10.5 inches, work 6 rows in 2x2 two two ribs then bind off the remaining stitches. The first part of these instructions can simply be input as the following event. It's an alert starting at 10.5 inches with a note saying 2x2 two two ribs and it's repeating every row 6 times. Now the next part of the instructions is where it gets interesting. We have to bind off the remaining stitches after the six rows of ribbing, so let's create an event for that. The problem is that we know neither the starting row nor height of this event. We simply know that we want to start it after the six rows of ribbing. So basically, we want to link this event to the completion of the ribbing event. To do that, we turn the linked switch on and we see that by default, this event is set to start in the first row after the ribbing event, which is exactly what we want. If you want to link to a different event or block, tap on the field and select the appropriate event or block from the list. Now we just have to input a note, for example, bind off remaining stitches, and we are done with this event. Once you're done setting up all your events, you can go to the counter and quickly click through the rows to see if you have to make any adjustments. If necessary, go back to the setup and make the modifications here. Apart from the block, the setup of the back piece is now done. The front piece works very similarly and please refer to the written tutorial number 3 for all the details.